are sponsoring the event. So, you know. <laughs> and not only we have a wonderful venue, you know, there's ice water and things like that, it's great. Otherwise, we do a lot of screening at the Arts House, which is the old Parliament House. So look out for, you know, for, uh, future screening. Um, before we start with the screening, I would like to take some of your time, maybe 15 minutes, to give you a very short introduction of what human trafficking is. I think it is very important that everybody understands what human trafficking means before we go and watch the movies and later on, you know, if you have time, we'll be happy to, you know, uh, have a discussion and your reflection on the whole issue. Yeah, please come in. Hi. Hi. Now, um, my name is, first of all, thank you for coming. It's really great to see people, you know, who are interested in this subject. It is a very uh, serious subject. It is a very uh, big problem in the world. And thank you for coming. My name is Sylvia Lee. I'm the um, founder of Emancipasia. And Emancipasia is a non-profit organization registered in Singapore. Um, we started our work last year in March 2012. And the mission of Emancipasia is to raise public awareness about human trafficking and by doing so, empower individuals, communities, and business to take action to help to combat this heinous crime. Okay, so that's our mission. And um, first of all, and we are a <coughs> non-profit. We, we do all our work by raising funds. I don't take a salary. We have no overheads. All the volunteers at the back pay for their. You know, there's absolutely no claim. Nothing. Okay, so this is. This is something that we can look straight in, our, in the eyes of donors and, and say things like that. Okay, before, first of all, I'd like to define what human trafficking is. Human trafficking under the UN definition consists of three components. And these three components must be there before we can say that this is a human trafficking case. Number one is about the act of doing it. That means you transport people, you harbour people, you receipt of a person, yeah, that is the act of doing it. The second component is how you actually do it. The how part consists of one of the one of the following is the abuse of power, use of authority, coercion, deception, and tricking people. Okay? The third element is what is the purpose of doing all this? is for the purpose of exploitation. Now, the issue now is the word exploitation is very general, very subjective. And it includes things like prostitution, yeah, exploiting people in terms of labor, ha organ harvesting, etc., etc. These three components must be there. Having said that, if a person has given you, or let's say you, la, we are all traffickers, has given you the consent, it doesn't matter. So that means to say uh, I can trick you, yeah, I can uh, coerce you into coming to Singapore, but you, yeah, I'll come, I'll come, I'll come, happily come. People say, she came voluntarily, how can you say it's human trafficking? Uh, 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 uh. The consent of the victim plays no part in this. Okay. Point number two, which is equally important, is once you touch a girl, a boy, uh, uh, a child, a child. Once you touch a child, is considered human trafficking. A child is under the age of 18. So once a child is involved, it doesn't matter whether you coerce the child, you trick the child, or not. It doesn't matter. So the exploitation of a child in any form is considered human trafficking. Now this is the definition of UN. When I spoke with Singapore government, they told me that yes, we followed this definition. Okay? Now let's take a step forward and say, how where do these people work? Yeah, the traffic people. I won't go into details, but just to give you a sense of it and later on if you are interested, I can tell you real stories. Number one is sex and entertainment. It is the most lucrative of all the industries where the, yeah, the traffic victims work. They work in uh, fishery and agriculture. Fishery is very common 
in the in the world, even in Asia, it is where the Burmese, the Thai, you know, the Chinese being coerced onto a fishing boat and they are basically locked up there for years, working day and day in, day out without pay. Without pay. And if they say, Where is my pay? Give me the money, they will be beaten up. Or if they fall sick, they will be given a bit of time to recover. If they don't recover, they will be thrown overboard. And you have, and I have seen reports in the, in the Singapore Straits time, reporting incidents of trafficked uh, fishermen. Okay? And there is a report saying that no wonder a lot of fishermen who go out, one third of them never came home. Agriculture is when they work in farms, probably not in Singapore probably, but in a lot of Western, you know, farms in America, in Australia, where Thai people, Thai men, grown-up men are being trafficked and exploited over there. Now, some statistics. Ah, before I forget, the other, uh, the other area where a lot of trafficked victims work are in the manufacturing industry, where all our cheap clothes and cheap watches and the electronics come from because yeah, they, these are the cheap, cheap labor which industries employ to stay competitive so that they can bring their price down in order to compete globally. The cost of production consists of two main components, right? Raw material and labor. These are the two big ones. <coughs> Raw material, the pricing is market driven Labor is the, is the one that you can extrapolate and you start not paying or retiring really cheap labor. Yeah. And if they are in exploitation, uh, ex what is the word, uh, condition, and they are tricked into doing that job, you, it becomes a human trafficking. Now, to men on the street like you and I, human trafficking seems a very distant problem. We don't human trafficking, shipping people around. That's why a lot of people cannot relate to them. Nowadays, the term modern day slavery is very often used in the same context so that you and I can relate to that better. Modern day slavery is actually the transportation of a person from A to B, yeah, if with the purpose of trying to sell the person for money or try to exploit the person for your own personal benefit. And it is a business transaction. In every case of human trafficking, there is a victim, it is a crime against humanity, and somebody is making money out of it. So human trafficking is a $32 billion a year global business. $32 billion US a year. The third largest after arms and drugs. Okay. Statistically, most of the victims are women and girls <coughs> because the sex industry is very lucrative. Whenever there is a demand for commercial sex, there is always the supply of girls. There is always the supply of girls. Yeah. Now, Singapore. Who thinks that there is trafficking in Singapore? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I can tell you, I have seen, I have met the victims of sex trafficking in Singapore. If time permits, I can tell you how it works. It's so easy. It's disgusting. Okay, I am not in the. I am not to judge whether commercial sex is right, yeah, and I am not to judge whether prostitution is right because these are the decision of adults. But what I would like to sh share when it comes to public raising awareness and advocacy, I would like to say that there are two types of prostitutes. One type is the willing one. The other type is the unwilling one who are sold and forced to do the work they are not willing to do. Okay? So ultimately, finally, to summarize, I want to leave with you two messages. 
Number one is when there is a demand for commercial sex, there will always be a supply of girls and women. Number two is when you and I continue to demand for low low cost services and products, there will be a demand for people to recruit labor and enslave them in the industries. So it could be clothing, it could be food, it can be anything that we consume. So the thing is, people say, what can I do? So the, the, we can talk about this afterwards. Okay, what can we do? So without taking any more of your time, and I will take questions, any questions that, burning questions that you would like to ask? Yes. So who actually created this film though? This is, um, these, these were hidden cameras, the film was smuggled out of Burma? No, this is not. This is a proper a documentary interviewing victims. Okay. Yeah, you see that, yeah. Okay. And um, yeah, and Emancipation, we have about a lot of films, and all of them are documentary films, real life stories. And some of them, I have about three feature films, and the feature films are based on real stories as well. So please check us out on you know our program and join us if you can. So we'll watch the movie after that. You know we can discuss. You know how if you want to help. You know, what are some of your thoughts, you know, how can we do, you know, work together or things like that. Let's play the movie first. Any other questions that you like before we screen the movie? It's about one hour plus. Thank you. Yeah, let's, let's start. <coughs> Oh,